No word from God will ever fail. Luke 1, 26 to 38. It's the season. What season are we talking about? The Christmas season. What comes into your mind when uh, we talk about Christmas? Well, I looked up on the internet and these are the words uh, that are associated with Christmas. I'm going to read them out for you. War on Christmas. That's not very nice. Christmas tree. We got one back there. Three wise men. And what they had uh, given to baby Jesus. That's gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Santa Claus, of course. Everybody knows that one. Santa Claus and Rudolph, the uh, red-nosed reindeer. Christmas gifts. Presents. An Advent calendar. Right? You know what that is. If you don't know, then you can look it up on Google. It's all there. Christmas Nativity. Right? We see uh, that a lot in different places, especially in front of churches. Noel, Noel, Noel. Annunciation. What is Annunciation? Angel Gabriel announced that uh, Mary, the Virgin Mary, will have a child. The baby Jesus. And that's Annunciation. Yule. You know Yule. Yuletide. And little drummer boy. That gets boring. <laughs> when you play it slow, right? It even makes you fall asleep. Uh, well, I did. Uh, but I was thinking, as I was going through all these words and reading articles about all these uh, stuff, <laughs> uh, I wondered, okay, where is... Jesus Christ, where is God in all of this? Where is God? I mean, I don't find God uh, in Christmas tree. I see Christmas gifts under the tree, right? At uh, Christmas trees, but where is God? Uh, even in the nativity scene, a uh, Christmas nativity scene, right? I see donkey. Uh, I see uh, farm animals, I see the manger, I see baby Jesus, Joseph and Mary, his parents. Where is God in all this? Where is God? Right? The most important thing about Christmas is that God came to us. God came to us as Jesus Christ. And that was, that was the fulfillment of God's words. Even from Genesis 3, Genesis 3.15, God foretold that He will come to us and that He will free us from the forces of darkness, from sin, from the problem of separation from God. Uh, one thing, one thing that I want to mention is that anybody can say that uh, they are Jesus Christ. Remember what, uh, remember what God said, you know, I am He, I am the promised Messiah. But in order to be the Messiah, the Christ, you have to fulfill every single prophecy from the Bible. You have to be born in Bethlehem. Uh, you have to go down to Egypt and come back to the land of Judea. You have to grow up in Nazareth, right? All these. Uh, now, I can't mention every single one of those prophecies, but you have to fulfill every single prophecy. You have to fulfill all words of God to say that I am that promised Messiah that Christ, right? So, when it, come, when it comes to Christmas, we have to remember that God came to us because we could not go up to God. And He came to us as a humble baby. I wished He came to us as 
uh, a king, as a prince, as a nobility, but he came as a commoners, a common people like us, right? A commoners child. And he was born in a manger. He was laid, <laughs> to be uh, uh, exact, he was laid in a manger. And it was all the fulfillment of God's words. You know what? No word from God will ever fail. That's one of the most important lessons we are uh, to get from Christmas. God sends an angel, his name is Gabriel, to the Virgin Mary to tell her that she will give birth to Jesus. In one word, we call this annunciation. Okay? Uh, not pronunciation, <laughs> not denunciation, but annunciation, announcement. But the spiritual state of Mary was very important. You know what I'm talking about, right? God just didn't send uh, this angel to anybody. God just didn't choose any girl. But God chose the Virgin Mary. Why? Because she was humble. Luke 1.48 uh, Would you like to read that verse with me from your bulletins? For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. Yes, this is what Mary uh, says about herself. She says that God has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. So, it's very important uh, what state that you are in. We need to be in a humble state. If you're in that state, God will bless you. Mary said, All generations will call me blessed. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. Uh, but, you know what? Anybody can say that God sent an angel to me and I heard God's voice. I heard angel's voice. Well, something needs to happen if, if, if it's truly the voice of God or the voice of an angel, then something needs to happen in your life, right? A lot of times, nothing happens. Uh, I know because I have had heard voice of God before. I had heard voice of the Holy Spirit before. I even have heard the voice of angels before. But they were not from God. They were not from angels. Because nothing happened. Actually something happened. Uh, uh, you know what they were? Uh, they were all bad things. After I heard those voices, bad things happened in my life. Why they were not from God. They were not from the Holy Spirit. They were not from the angels. Right? So, it's very important what you hear. You hear voices of the world, then, then you're going to become worldly. You keep hearing the voice of the world, you're going to become a worldly person, right? You keep hearing strange voices, then you're going to become a strange person, right? Crazy person. Uh, but you keep hearing the voice of God, the Word of God, then you know what? You're going to become a spiritual person. Person, what you hear matters. It's very important uh, what you hear. What you hear is who you are. You are what you hear. You know, I made up this phrase uh, three days ago as I was preparing today's message, and I thought, wow, what a great phrase. I made, it up. I made it up, but I think I came up with one of the greatest phrases 
And I typed it on Google, and guess what? It's already there. Ah! <laughs> right? Uh, I think it's the name of an album or a book, maybe both, right? So somebody uh, already uh, used it. <laughs> uh, but it makes sense, right? Let's say uh, you are a worldly person, then you keep uh, wanting to hear worldly voices. Makes sense, right? And vice versa. You keep hearing the voice of the world, then you become a worldly person. So, you know, same thing. Either way, you are what you hear. Now, you may, you may be thinking, oh, I'm a worldly person. I kept, uh, uh, I'm a worldly person, so I will have no choice but to uh, hear from the world all the time. Well, you can change that. Keep listening to the Word of God, the message of God, especially the message of Christ. And you know what? You're going to become a God-centered person. A Christ-centered person, right? You become a Christ-centered person, God-centered person. Guess what's going to happen? You will be wanting to hear the Word of God all the more. You will be wanting to hear the message of Christ all the more, right? So, let's all make that choice. You know, I've been hearing uh, too many things about Christmas this season. What things am I talking about? Well, war on Christmas, Christmas tree, three wise men, Santa Claus, root of the reindeer, the ad, an advent calendar, Christmas nativity, right? Little drummer boy. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay. I mean, uh, wh where is my mind? Where is my heart? All of a sudden I realized it's in the world. It's not on Jesus Christ. It's not on God. Why? Because I've been hearing from the world too much. Oh, this is too much. Right? So I deliberately, deliberately chose to listen to the message of Christ last night. And for one, about one hour, I was listening to my own messages. <laughs> to check you know, how I did, uh, whether I had made mistakes in the past. Uh, that was another purpose. Uh, but I deliberately, deliberately did that. Uh, so that's one thing uh, that we have uh, to choose to do this season. We have to make that choice. To listen to the Word of God, especially His promises this season, because we can easily get carried away. Uh, uh, most important Word of God is His promise or His promises. Right? Uh, 66 books of the Bible. There are many, many words of God. But what matters most for us is His promises. Because you hold on to His promise or promises, God's going to fulfill them. Yes, we lack strength. Yes, we have weaknesses. We, have, we all have our own challenges. But God is powerful. And God is perfect. You hold on to His perfect and powerful words. And you know why? We're going to be victorious. No word from God will ever fail. So you hold on to His words. You're going to be victorious even in this world. Now I'm going to go, uh, as I promised, uh, I will talk about Mary and, his, and her her spiritual state. Uh, she was in uh, a very humble spiritual state. And that's why God chose her. Let's say uh, God sent this angel to a very proud girl. Right? A very stubborn and proud girl. Uh, that girl would have said, God, are you crazy? I'm not even married yet. Yes, 
I'm engaged, but I'm not married. I don't, you know, I don't know a man. I get pregnant. I'm going to get stoned to death. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to be humiliated. Uh, and uh, what if uh, Joseph decides uh, to not marry me because I'm pregnant? <laughs> He's going to be sus- suspicious of me. And uh, maybe I might not get stoned, but what if he, what if he breaks the engagement, right? But Mary was not like that. She was a very humble girl. And she said, maybe as you have said. Now, what verse is that? It's uh, verse 38. Let's all read Luke 1, 38 from our bulletins. It's on the cover page. I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. That's why God chose her. That's why God chose the Virgin Mary. She was humble. She was obedient. When she heard from angel Gabriel that she was going to have a child by the power of the Holy Spirit, even though she did not know man, she said, I am the Lord's servant. I am your servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. So, we got to be in this humble state, this humble spiritual state. God speaks to the humble. You want to listen to God's voice, His word, you got to be humble before Him. And once God speaks to you, it's going to be fulfilled. God spoke to Mary, and it was fulfilled. Uh, Mary, who knew no man, had a child by the power of the Holy Spirit, anything can happen by the whole by the power of the Holy Spirit. But, but, you have to receive the word of God, and God gives His word to those who are humble. God does not speak to the proud. Luke one fifty one. Let's read Luke one fifty one from our bulletins. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. When we talk about uh, being proud, why not uh, talk about just uh, actions and behavior? We are talking about uh, people's inmost thoughts. People's inmost thoughts. You can be very humble on the outside. You can be very obedient on the outside. But inside, you can be very proud. In your inmost thoughts, you can be proud. And God does not speak to those people. Well, God can, but He will humble you first. That happened to me. On the outside, I was a very humble guy. Uh, one time, somebody tried to trick me. He, uh, he said that uh, we're going to uh, uh, give you an award. The most, humble, uh, the most humble guy in the world. Is it the humble list? <laughs> guy in the world. And we're going to give you a badge. And that was a trick. Right? Uh, if I had said, yes, that's right, I'm the most humblest. There's nobody more <laughs> a humbler than me. I deserve that award. I deserve that badge. Uh, if I said that, then, then I am disqualified. Because if you're truly humble, you don't uh, claim to be the most humblest person in the world. So that was a trick. And uh, uh, I don't think I fell for it. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, God wants to give you a word, but you are too proud. There's something that God does to you. Because God loves you, God will humble you. Uh, God will put you in that uh, uh, spiritual state. 
that humble spiritual state. And as, and as I uh, told you, uh, that was me. On the outside, I, I, you know, I was very humble, but inside I was proud. In my inmost thoughts, I was proud. And I could fake anybody. I couldn't fake God. And He humbled me. I was able to receive His word or His words. All of them were fulfilled in my life. Actually, some of them are still being fulfilled in my life. So let us, why not robots, right? So we do have a will, don't we? Let us humble ourselves this season. And God will speak to you. All those words will be fulfilled in our lives. God does not speak to the rich in the spirit. Of course, in Matthew, the book of Matthew, it says, Blessed are those who are poor in the spirit. Uh, in Luke, it says, Blessed uh, are the poor. But we shouldn't be taking that literally because the homeless are poor. poor. Does that mean that every single homeless uh, is blessed from God? No. Uh, but Matthew says, Blessed are the poor in the Spirit. And Luke one fifty three says, He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. Is God biased? Does He discriminate? Does He hate rich people? No, He doesn't hate rich people. But if you are rich in the Spirit, then sorry, you're going to go empty-handed from God. Uh, God speaks to the, the poor, but uh, the poor who are uh, the poor in the spirit. So let us let us humble ourselves and let us make uh, make ourselves poor by giving all our money to the homeless. No, no, then we will become homeless as well. And they will not appreciate that because now they have competitors. The homeless do, right? And they don't want any more competitors, I'm sure. God bless homeless. Uh, so let's, uh, let's not give all our money to the homeless, but let us make our spirit poor so that God may speak to us. And when He speaks, things will happen. God spoke to Mary, things happened. God speaks to us, things will happen. We try to make things happen all the time. Sometimes we succeed, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we fail. Sometimes it's utter failure. God speaks, then it will happen. No word from God will ever fail. Verse 37. God fulfills what He speaks. Let's all read this important verse one more time from verse 37. It's on our uh, cover page of the bulletin. For no word from God will ever fail. Yes, we fail, but God doesn't. His word will never fail. Nothing is impossible with God. This is from the previous version of NIV. So the current version of the NIV says, uh, no word from God will ever fail, but the previous version, which is 1984 uh, NIV, is nothing is impossible with God. Same thing. It means the same. Nothing is impossible with God. And this uh, God, this Almighty God, lifts up the humble. Not the proud, but the humble. Verse 52, Luke 152. Let's all read together. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. So, who wants to be lifted up by God? Right? If you do, then please don't raise your hand. 
And of course I knew it, right? All of you want to be lifted up by God. Uh, you want to be lifted up by God, you got to be humble, right? Uh, in the spirit, before God. And God fills the hungry with good things. Luke one fifty three. We already, already uh, I already read that verse, so I'm not going to read it again, right? Uh, now we got to take this verse spiritually. I don't think any of us are hungry. Uh, well, maybe you skipped your breakfast, so you are. <laughs> uh, but I'm saying. Uh, I'm saying that I'm sure none of you are hungry all the time. Because you have no money, you have no food, so you are hungry all the time. I don't think any of us are like that. Uh, But if you are hungry and thirsty before God all the time, God will fill you with good things. God will fill you with good things, but you got to be spiritually hungry before God. Uh, I don't need the Word of God. Uh, I don't need the message of Christ. I can take care of myself, right? I can do it. Just do it, Nike. Uh, If you're in that state, God's not going to speak to you. God's not going to fill you with good things. you got to hunger for God's grace. you got to hunger for God's word. you got to be thirsty for God's grace, God's blessing. And God fills those with good things. So, here's the conclusion. Here's the conclusion. Let's all read the conclusion from our bulletins together. We will never fail when we firmly hold to the never-failing Word of God. Right? We are human beings, so we fail, and that's okay. We make mistakes, we even sin, that's okay. That's okay. We're not perfect, right? Uh, but we would rather not fail, right? Uh, We would rather uh, be successful and be victorious, obviously. Uh, You want that? Then hold to the never-failing Word of God, Luke 1, 37. No Word from God will ever fail. So you hold on to God's Word You will not fail. And even when you make mistakes, even that will uh, work for you at the end. It will work out for you at the end. I remember all my past mistakes and I am embarrassed. Totally embarrassed. I feel humiliated. But when I held on to the never failing word of God, you know what happened? God worked. So that all my past mistakes worked out well for me. It worked out for me. So, yes, uh, we're all busy this Christmas season, right? It's going to be New Year soon. And uh, once again, uh, we will be busy, right? Uh, uh, It's that season. It's the busy season. There There are more cars on the freeways. Uh, going back and forth. But let us, let us focus on the Word of God. Let us read the Word of God and hold to the promises of God. And we will never fail and we will enjoy the victory every single day of our lives. God bless all of you. Let's greet each other one more time. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. God bless you all this Christmas. Let me pray. Father God, thank you for giving us Jesus Christ. It is a season to be reminded that you came to us as Jesus Christ and saw and had solved all our problems. 
whether they may be the forces of the problem of the forces of darkness, sin, or the separation from God. So help us to be reminded of Jesus Christ this season and hold on to your word, your never-failing word. I pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.